your heating system is a forced hot water heating system. In this case, you've got a convector in each room. Now, a convector has heated water that comes up through a pipe right here, passes through this fin heat exchanger, and heats up the air. These things are fine. We don't have to do a thing up here. All of our work is going to be down in the basement. Okay. Now, your heating system has pretty much been the standard package around these parts for the last 60 years. It's okay. not exactly new technology. This is a gas-fired cast iron heating boiler. There's a burner underneath, and that heats up a big block of cast iron right here that's filled with water. All the flue gas goes up through this pipe right here into the chimney. Now, when the thermostat comes on upstairs, it brings on the burner, but it also brings this circulator pump on to send the heated water up through those convectors upstairs. It works. Now, one thing I do notice is right here. This thing is rated for 150,000 BTUs. So what does that mean? It means it's really big. This would be good for a house that's about 3,000 square feet. I have under 1,000. Right. We could actually heat your neighbors, next to your neighbors' houses. <laughs> that's incredible. All right. But that's not unusual. We see this happen all the time. People have tended to oversize to be safe, and that's inefficient. Now, that's for heating of the house. You have a separate system right here for making hot water for the faucets. There's a gas-fired tank-type water heater. Burner right here, heats up a big tank of water right here, 40 gallons of water. This thing's on 24-7 every day, whether or not you're here or not, to make hot water. The fact is, both of these systems, they work. You have heat, you have hot water. And if fuel hadn't continued to go up, we'd probably just keep doing this way forever. Right. What we want to do today is to eliminate the boiler and the water heater with one device which combines heating and hot water much more efficiently. Say hello to Barry Cullen. Hey, Barry. Hi, Hi how are you? Barry and his crew are helping us with the installation today. What have we got? What we have here is we have a gas-fired combination boiler, and it provides both heat and hot water to the house. And what we call it is a combi. So this one small unit is going to replace both of those. Yeah, let me show you how it works. Now, it looks a little daunting, but let me demystify it a little bit. Before, you had 10 gallons of water in a cast iron block. Now, you have one gallon of water inside this stainless steel block. Here's that circulator pump, like you had before, which pushes the water through to be heated inside this block. It goes out to your convectors, okay. gives up its heat to upstairs, comes back cooler, and to be reheated. So that's your basic boiler, but it's much more efficient. Where it differs is this. It can make domestic hot water. See this shiny thing right here with the orange and silver? This is actually a very ingenious flat plate heat exchanger. Now, this is a series of plates that are stacked on top of one another. Boiler water goes in this direction through every other plate. Potable water or cold water comes the opposite direction through the other plates. Now, the boiler water never touches that potable water. Okay. Okay? But what happens is the heat from the boiler water is given up to that cold water, thereby making hot water up at your faucets. Okay. Right? What's nice about this is this burner doesn't come on to make hot water for the faucets unless you open up the faucet, which means you don't use anything if you're not using any hot water and there's no tank. Wow, that's amazing. It's pretty cool. Now, Barry and his crew have done a good job. You've got a lot of stuff done here. You've got plywood, the hangers are up. I see gas piping, water piping. We're ready to put this up? Sure. All right. Okay, you got it? Okay, good. Now, one of the things about these units, they're so efficient that there's not much left in the flue gas except a little bit of temperature and a little bit of water. So we really can't go into the old style chimney. Uh, we have to actually vent to outside. So we're going to need two holes to the outside. One is for the flue gas to go outside. The other is for combustion air, the air to be burned to come inside. Now we just make up the PVC connections. Okay, turn it in. Twist it in. That's good. Well, it turns out that this side of the building is really a good location for the sidewall venting. You can see the intake right here. Here's the exhaust. Each of them are going to okay. have a screen to keep out birds and bugs. Okay. Now, the codes have clear rules about placement. It wants to be above the snow line so the intake wouldn't get blocked by snow, which is fine. The other is the exhaust cannot be within 12 inches of a window, so that's fine. 
And finally, it needs to be no closer than one foot between the intake and the exhaust. You don't want to bring flue products back in to be reburned. Oh. Perfect location. Great. All right, Barry, the venting's completed now. Yeah, all we got to do now is the piping. All right, so piping, that means hot and cold piping right here. We also have the supply and return piping to the heating system right here and the gas connection to the new combi boiler. In this old boiler, you had one speed. The thermostat right. would call and you would get 150,000 BTUs of firing power. With the new device, it's got a modulating gas valve. And that means it can modulate between 17,000 BTUs up to 75,000. So we can always match the load that we need. So how does it do that? Well, it has an outdoor temperature sensor like this. This will mount okay. on the north side of the building, feed back to the control. It'll watch that temperature on the coldest day of the year. You'll fire it up to full fire, just like the old boiler was, and give you plenty of temperature to go through the convectors. But okay. on the spring and the fall, which is most of the heating season, it says, no, we don't need that much water temperature to still heat the building. And that's where you save the energy. Wow, that's great. All right, Anne-Marie, your new combi boiler is ready to go. Are you excited? I'm super excited. <laughs> now, we've got our vent connections done. Here's the hot and cold that goes out to your faucets upstairs. Okay. Now this is the supply and return pipe, and that connects to your convectors, and here's your circulator pump that'll send that heat around. Here's your gas piping, that's all done, and electrical's done as well. Great. So now, anytime we burn gas, normally there's a bunch of water vapor filled with heat that goes up and out of the chimney. Huh. This is a condensing board, and what that does is it actually extracts the heat out of the water droplets that would have been lost up to the atmosphere, uses it inside the boiler, makes it much more efficient, but we have gotta deal with the water that's left over, and this is called condensate. You can see right here that it goes to a limestone neutralizer because that condensate can be a little bit acidic. This is a condensate pump to pump that water right over to the sink. But we're ready to go. Great. You turn on this button right here. All right, Barry, why don't you open up that hot water faucet? I hear it. I feel it. You got hot water over there? Oh, yeah. You have hot water. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And now it's going to be great. You're going to have plenty of heat in your house. You'll never run out of hot water, and you're going to save a ton of energy. Oh, my gosh. And you know what else I'm realizing? This is all of my mechanicals. That's right. So now my little house just got a little <laughs> bit bigger. <laughs> That's right. Let's get this out of your way. Great. All Thank right. You. See you later, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, it seems like a nice little machine. I mean, we're talking efficient, compact. Yep. You get two devices turned into one. Yep. Why isn't this thing in everybody's house? Well, everybody wants this. One appliance that can do both heating and hot water. But it has a limitation, and that's really the size of the house. If the house is too big, you don't, don't have enough available power. The other is domestic hot water. If you've got a really big tub, 80 to 100 gallons, this might not fill it at the speed you'd like it to be filled at. But you could take a shower all day long. You could. That's one of the great things about this. Now, can it heat the house and produce domestic hot water at the same time? Technically, no. You know, in normal mode, this unit is going to try to heat the building. And so the water will leave this heat exchanger, go through this pump, and go out to the system right here. Now, if you open up a faucet, there's a sensor in here that will now divert the water through this valve through that heat exchanger. Now it's going to heat up that hot water and it's going to give domestic hot water the priority as long as you have that faucet open. You leave it on for 10, 12, 15 minutes, you'd never notice it right. that you didn't have heat upstairs. All right. Well, you are always showing us new stuff, Richard. Thank Trying you. Trying to. <laughs> so until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thuy. I'm Tom Silva. And I'm Roger Cook. For Ask This Old House. I take really long showers. We can adjust for that. We can adjust. You just won't have heat. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs>